Hey there, welcome to Lima Bean Living. In today's video, I am going to be sharing a cranberry cake recipe, which is a family favorite for the holidays, and I really hope you guys enjoy. So on this day, we were actually making a triple batch. That is why you see so many ingredients here. We used nine eggs, six cups of flour, six cups of sugar, three teaspoons of almond extract, two and a quarter cups of butter or four and a half sticks, six cups of cranberries, and this ended up being actually a little bit less than what was asked for in the recipe, but we didn't really want to break out another bag, so this worked out well. If you want the recipe, you can go ahead and screenshot it here. And let's just get into this. So we started by preheating our oven to 350 degrees. And then we are going to start beating our eggs, making sure just all the yolks get broken. And add in your sugar and beat that for five minutes until it's like a nice, pale, white, fluffy texture. Then we want to add in our butter, which was softening all day in our case, so it made it really easy to mix in. So make sure it's soft, it'll make your life a whole lot easier. And add in the almond extract, and you're gonna beat this for about two minutes. Once that is nice and like fluffy, we're gonna go ahead and stir in the flour and just mix it until it's just combined. We use the mixture here. We're not using like a folding method with a spatula, but just don't over mix it. Once you add in all the flour, it will be very thick. So just kind of keep that in mind. And then we're gonna go ahead and add in our cranberries. Like I said, this was actually a little less than what the recipe called for, but it looked like it was too much. So it ended up being perfect. So if you have a little bit less, that's totally fine. If you add a little bit more, that's probably fine too. It's just kind of up to your taste. We ended up using a spatula and folding in the rest of the cranberries. And if you want, you can add in chopped pecans. We end up doing like some with the nuts and some without, so that is why they're set aside for now. Then you're gonna go ahead and grease a pan or line it with parchment paper and spread the batter out in the pan. Remember this batter is very thick, so it does take a little bit of working to get it nicely coated in the pan. And then, like I said, if you want some with nuts and some without, you can go ahead and add the nuts into the batter after you've portioned out the nutless batter. Then we went and threw it in the oven. It took a little bit longer since we were making so much, but it came out perfectly. It was nice and delicious. And we like to cut these up in little tiny cubes and we actually plate them like ahead of time and then you can freeze them. They freeze really well. And then you just bring them out for whatever event you're gonna host and you know, let it defrost and you're good to go. I'd like to thank you for watching today's video. If you try this recipe, let me know down in the comments how it goes for you. Subscribe if you are new. I'd love to have you check out all my motherhood content. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I'll catch you in the next one. end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.